Hi there, this is Jenny with Miss Hannah. Hannah! Hey! Don't you even think about it, you little food monger. All right, Hannah's gonna be working <laughs> and I, um, some different skills in the session and um, it's gonna be based on things you can do to keep her active. Um, so I did a trick session with her earlier today where we practiced um, a trick called wipe your paws, which we may revisit in this session, but she made some pretty good progress, so I think I'll leave it for maybe another day. Um, but some of the things that I want to talk about um, are things um, that um, include things like puzzle toys and a style of training called shaping. So Hannah is a really bright girl. She's really nicely food motivated, which is really great in working with obedience and different skills like that. Good job! Good girl! Um, but the swing side of that is that because she is such a smart, active dog, she is going to need um, a good number of things to keep her busy, um, to keep her um, mentally stimulated, and um, keep, uh, keep her from finding what buttons she can push um, with her family to get what she wants, because she is a very smart dog, and a lot of times smart dogs um, that are that way um, are really good people trainers. So. Um, Hannah is, has such a sweet disposition um, and really, really does want to please. Um, so a lot of these activities and continued training, um, I think she's going to really want to do anyway. So um, just keeping that, uh, that flow of things can be good. So first off, um, we have this little game here that I'm doing with Hannah, which is called Muffin Tin Game. Um, and we can practice some impulse control with this. So this is just your run-of-the-mill muffin tin. Um, it's a little older one, banged up, um, that I didn't necessarily want to use for cooking anymore. Um, so converted it to a dog puzzle toy. So um, you've got all these wells here. You can use it um, set up this way or upside down as kind of a slow bowl, slow feeder kind of idea. But we're going to try it this way because Hannah's smart enough she could figure this out. She did it earlier. Um, and you can use tennis balls or a, a similarly, similarly sized ball or toy of some sort to block these little muffin tops. I know. And um, <clears throat> underneath those so you can put a treat in a well. Hi! Put the ball on top and Hannah's job is to move that tennis ball and um, reveal the treat. So she can do that using her paws, using her nose. Uh, she's again a very smart dog so she may even tip the whole tray over. And you can make it um, more difficult or easy um, by either filling all of these little um, muffin spots with tennis balls and treats. You can fill them all with tennis balls but only some of the tennis balls have a treat underneath. Um, or, um, like we are now, just starting out, I'm just going to start with one tennis ball with a treat underneath it, because Hannah, I think, is up to that level. So I want to practice some impulse control with her, and this is another good um, kind of uh, thing you can practice with her food bowl to keep her um, working um, for, for all her goodies, um, which is a release cue um, to come eat. So she's jumping up on me. She's got four, on the, four feet on the floor right now, so I'm going to reward that. Good girl, Hannah. Yes, good job. Place the toy on the ground, give her time to figure it out. She's a, a paw or Yes, good job! Good girl! Okay! Good job, ready? Good again? And sit. Yes. Wait. Oh. Wait. Wait. Okay. Good girl. Good girl, Hannah. Good job! What a good girl! Good girl! Okay! Alright, we're gonna up our ante. You're getting good at this. Alright. Ready? So we got three tennis balls now. Sit. Good girl. Wait. sit, um, asking her to wait while I place the toy on the ground, and then what I like to do with a lot of dogs is get that focus back before I release her. So I'm going to ask her for eye contact with the look cue so she looks back up to me, and then give her the go ahead to go and um, check out this toy, this puzzle. Good job. So she's got one. That one doesn't have anything. 
So puzzle games like these are really great. Um, they're going to hold her attention for longer. So um, we're using treats right now in, um, in this session. Um, but you could um, just as easily use um, pieces of kibble, um, especially if you were to fill the whole puzzle toy with something you missed one. Keep going. Um, it requires her to use some different senses, which a lot of times we don't really allow our dogs to use. So she's got to sniff out those treats. Um, and they, a lot of um, different companies make um, versions of these puzzle toys, and some are easier and some are harder, um, depending on the dog. Um, but there are a lot of really cool, easy, at-home ones that you can try. All right. So we'll stop with the muffin tin game there. Okay. And we will try. You ready? Anna! Let's go! Good girl! You ready? So the other thing that we can do with Hannah is something called shaping. So <laughs> this is um, rewarding Hannah for tiny micro behaviors that she shows um, that we can then um, progressively reward that lead us to an ultimate behavior. Ready? You hop! Yeah! Good job! Good girl. Ready? Hop! Yay! Good girl, Hannah! Very nice. So, <clears throat> I've just got this cone here, and um, I'm going to start out with something that's closer to something called free shaping, which any behavior that Hannah shows with this cone, I can click and treat, and progressively I can reward her for different interactions. <laughs> Good job. And, um, <clears throat> oh, that's pretty cool. Good job. <laughs> I got her in the jumping mindset with that hop cue. Yeah? What do you think? having a little trouble, I want her to interact with the cone in some way. Okay, so she's close to the cone, so I'll treat by it.
chest. vicinity of the cone so she's getting hotter and hotter and hotter she's touching the cone she's hanging around the cone she puts a paw on the base of the cone she puts her nose on the base of the cone and moving this ideally higher and higher and higher until she really was focusing more on the very top part of this cone here which is my goal so um, you can start activities like that without a goal in mind and that can sometimes be easier because then it's all dependent on what Hannah offers which is really fun um, and Hannah definitely got a kick out of it. She's super focused. Um, she really likes um, interacting like that and that kind of puzzling and figuring out um, what she's listening for. So it does require you know some skill with the clicker um, to communicate to her clearly that um, um, exactly those little tiny um, uh, micro actions, little actions that lead up to a final behavior. Um, but that's a really great skill and a trick dog that she is so responsive to that. Hey, hon! Um, <laughs> so, um, I mean, she really has endless possibilities. She's such a smart girl. Ready? Ha! Yes, good girl! Um, we've been able to get that jump um, straight up in the air, um, basically kind of whenever we want it. Ready? Ha! Yeah! Good job! Um, so, sports, tricks, um, a really fun, active um, uh, family dog. Um, she really just have, has some really endless possibilities. So. Um, she did a really great job in this session. I'm going to go let her take a break in her room. Ready? Hop! Yeah! Good girl! And we'll be back with more next time. Good job. Look at those zoomy ears. You okay? You okay? Yeah. Did it go right down the wrong pipe? Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> 